my name is David Erlinger from Lund, Sweden, and um, we are here to discuss uh, difficult cases in acute coronary syndromes, revascularization in clinical practice. And with me, I have Lena Holmbank from Copenhagen, uh, Denmark, and Philip Kohl from uh, Belgium, and Miguel Sousa Uva from uh, Lisbon, Portugal. So, um, Lena, uh, what are the big issues when treating a non STEMI patient with three vessel disease? Well, uh, I think the key word is heart team. Because uh, in patients with non STEMI, they are often older, they have more complex coronary artery disease. They have many comorbidities, so it's very important that uh, you sit down together, take the time to discuss the patient whenever it's possible, so that you can choose the correct and the best treatment for the patient, also based on patient preference, of course. So when choosing between bypass surgery and PCI, the heart team is the, uh, the key. Do you think you get help from the revascularization guidelines that came out 2014 in making your decisions for these patients? Well, when you, do, when you make guidelines, you can, never, um, um, you can never describe all patients in detail. So you can get a lot of help, but there will always be patients who are uh, severely ill, who have other comorbidities, then, uh, so uh, you have to discuss them individually. But you can get some guidance, but it's not uh, the law. So, Philip, what are the big issues in treating a STEMI patient with three vessel disease? Well, for the STEMI patient, we're still based on the 2014 myocardial revascularization guidelines. Uh, we will have new guidelines on STEMI, I think, in 2017. It's still down the road. Now, I think the first point, obviously, is uh, that most of these patients, all patients, should be treated with a PCI of the culprit lesion, and fibrinolysis should be performed only in cases that do not offer a PCI within 120 minutes of first medical contact. Now, the, the question obviously is what to do with the other lesions when the patient is suffering from other lesions. So, in the guidelines, we clearly state that. Um, the treatment should be limited to the culprit lesion with the exception of selected patients for whom uh, full revascularization during the index uh, procedure may be considered. So last year, that's what we said, there are additional evidence to further discuss this issue, but I think it's quite important. Uh, the second point is the use of the stent. I mean, clearly, a drug eluding stent, a new generation drug eluding stent actually uh, should be used in all patients with STEMI. Another consideration is regarding uh, the uh, duration of dual antiplatelet therapy. So far, it's 12 months. I know that there are new trials, such as the Pegasus trial, that should be taken into consideration, stating that maybe uh, in selected patients with additional comorbidities, uh, such as uh, chronic kidney disease or age or peripheral arterial disease, for example, uh, DAPT uh, maybe continue over 12 years. Okay, so Miguel, what are the big issues in treating a STEMI patient with cardiogenic shock? Well, the big issues is that uh, these patients are a very severe patients, and unfortunately we are lacking data. And most of the data upon which we base our decisions are data coming from observational studies. We lack randomized studies because the, the numbers are small, we don't have multicentral registries yet. So we have uh, quite a few decisions, very important ones, that are taken based on observational data. And the big discussion is, for example, the use of intraaortic balloon pump. In, in this regard, we have um, data that show us that there is no mortality benefit regarding intraaortic balloon pump, but still there are some outcomes that are improved. Then the other issue is when to use mechanical uh, uh, support. Uh, and uh, the question is either we should, uh, when should it use, be used? And the decision, as we stressed before, must be taken in a multidisciplinary team. And timing is very important because you should not allow the patient to have multi-organ dysfunction. You have to take these decisions before that occurs. And uh, otherwise, it's too late. And so despite the high mortality, we have to be the things organized beforehand in order to establish uh, some kind of, of unloading of the left ventricle and preventing these irreversible organ uh, dysfunctions to occur because then mortality is, is really too high. 
Very good. So uh, I should sum up this session. And we have discussed complex cases and how they should be revascularized. We have learned that non STEMI cases with three vessel disease need a heart team decision based on the guidelines uh, uh, as far as they can help us. We have learned that in a STEMI patient with three vessel disease, uh, acute revascularization is not always favored, but they should always be treated with PCI, they should, we should be used drug eluting stents and so forth. It should be a discussion also with the heart team when uh, the culprit lesion has been treated. And for the most complex cases, the STEMI patients with cardiogenic shock, we have very little evidence from uh, randomized clinical trials, uh, but uh, we need to help each other in the heart team and we, we need to improve the treatment of these patients because these are the patients that die um, from, with STEMI. So thank you everyone. This was a great discussion. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank Pleasure. you. Thank you.